everyone. It's Henry at Morrison Blowers. Good morning. Lots of rain this morning, but now it's around 1130 and the weather's starting to clear up. Just in time for me to come out here and start doing some wrenching for the day. As you know from yesterday's episode, I tried to swap an engine off of this Toro 826. It's an eight horsepower Briggs engine. It's old, has the electric start too, but it seems to run pretty well. I tried to put this engine on that Craftsman 827, a little bit newer model. That engine uh, was blown, so I just have the snowblower itself, sans engine. Well, anyway, I tried putting that engine on, won't fit. Bolt pattern's too wide, and I didn't want to drill, plus the pulley wouldn't fit either. That's a one inch crankshaft output. The other one, the pulley, is a uh, three quarter inch. So that pulley won't fit on this crankshaft. Just way too many modifications that I said, forget about it. I'm not gonna put this engine on there because it would take too much drilling and fabrication to get it to go, and it may not work. <clears throat> So I decided that I'm going to probably put this engine back on here again and fix this one up. This one has some issues. I'm not really 100% sure about the transmission and all that stuff uh, since I've had limited testing on, on that. Uh, while going through this yesterday, both belts on here, while I thought that there were some kind of special belts where it has these, uh, I don't know what you call these things, teeth, right? I thought that there were spe it was a special belt because it had only had teeth like every other two inches, you know? But then upon further inspection, it's just trashed, that's all. The teeth had fallen off. So both these belts are Dunsky! Both these belts are Dunsky. So I decided to go and I was gonna order some new belts for this uh, snowblower. But before I go out and spend money, right, I wanted to ask Mike, Mike the, from Mike's Lawn Service underscore Babylon who gave it to me. It seemed like to me that he was reluctant to, to give it away. You know what I'm saying? That he could make some money off of selling it, right? But in the condition it was, he couldn't really sell it for that much money. So that kid's been bringing me a lot of stuff, right? And while I did fix his primer bulb off of his Toro uh, 33, uh, 3650 CCR single stage snowblower, I feel like I should do something nice for him. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I went ahead and ordered new belts for it anyway, and I'm going to give it back to him after I fix it. So uh, that would be my good deed for the month. <laughs> you know, uh, while I would love to have this snowblower, right? Um, he needs it more than I do because I've got like eight snowblowers, you know? And so the least I can do after all the stuff he's given me is just try to fix up this snowblower best I can and give it back to him. So I got uh, a couple of belts coming. It was cheap. It was like uh, 15 bucks total for two, you know? That's cheap. <clears throat> you guys ever need to find belts cheap? Comment on the comments below and give me your model number. I'll find the cheapest belts ever. Like five, eight, ten dollars, you know what I mean? Depending on the length. Uh, anyway, so I can't work on this today because, and I haven't even secured the engine on here because I'm waiting for the belts to come. Because the pulley won't come off, it's easier to put the belts on with the engine wobbly, you know, because you can tilt the, the engine down to give it more slack, to slip the belts over the pulley instead of trying to, you know, pry the belts onto the pulley, you know? That pulley is not coming off. Um, anyway, so that's that. So today, I'm going to be working on this Craftsman 6.5 horsepower quantum engine. Um, front self-propelled lawnmower with key start. Has the big bagger on it. And uh, this is also given to me by my friend Mike. So, he, like I said, he's given me a lot of stuff over the years, you know. At least I can do is, you know, I know he kind of wants that snowblower back. So, even though I like it and I want it, right, I'm going to try to fix it up for him and uh, give it back to him. Anyway, 
So uh, this has been this is the last of my snow, uh, my lawn mowers that I have to fix. Everything else in my backyard has been fixed, has been running, and all that. I don't know if it runs now. You know, they all have gas in it. You know, but I've been trying to mow my lawn with the remaining mowers that have gas in it, just to you know deplete the gas from it before I have to store it. We're not quite there yet. You know, it's not quite cold enough to start doing a move. You know, like um, racking and stacking all my lawn mowers into my shed and taking all the snow blowers out. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. So I do want to slowly try to deplete all the gas out of my, my push mowers. But anyway, so let's try to figure out what's wrong with this and why the, the owner threw it away. So it's got clean oil in it. It's at the ad line, but it's very clean. Like it just had a uh, oil change, you know? So that's good news. Let's check out the gasage. It's a little wet. But as you guys know with these quantum gas tanks, they're huge. Even though it doesn't seem like there's any gas in here, there's plenty of gas because I have I have run, I have mowed my entire front lawn with like nothing in there, you know? So there's enough in there to, I think the prime and the test. So it's got some gas, <clears throat> maybe. It's got a primer bulb, which I don't like because if you don't have the gaskets right on these quantums, right, it won't prime. But let's just prime it, give it a couple of pulls and see what happens. Cable seems okay, I smell some gas. Feels funny. Hard to pull. It feels like it has good compression though. Take a look underneath. It is. This is heavy, really big and heavy. Blade seems fine. You know what? Let's uh, let's shoot some carb spray in there just to make sure. Come on, you got to change out of your clothes and get dirty, right? Get the dirty clothes on. You don't want to ruin your new clothes or your good clothes. Let's see if it primes. It does prime very well. Let's just shoot some in there. Doesn't seem to be getting any spark. Sometimes, sometimes, the brake to the the brake cable to the magneto kill flyway flywheel brake assembly is hinky, meaning that if you pull the um, bail handle down, the cable retracts that thing, right? But sometimes it doesn't retract it enough. So if it doesn't retract it enough, it's still being grounded, therefore you don't have a spark. Like for instance, watch, it's completely down now. You can still move it almost an inch. So maybe if you move it almost an inch more, it'll be off the ground, you know? Just testing it to see if that's the case. It might be, because it's happened before. So now it's almost to the end. So if anything was still touching, it's apart now. Nope, that's not the issue. Let me get my spark tester. The thing about this is when you're testing lawnmowers in the daytime, it's 
very, very difficult to see a spark. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm putting my camera, putting my camera here really close to the tester. And I'm gonna record if I see a spark or not. Very close. <laughs> and I'm gonna see if I see any spark. And then come back to the video and see. Did you guys see any spark? I'm gonna look at the so I'm sure you guys saw what I saw. And what I saw was initially when I first pulled it, I saw one little dab of light. And then the preceding three pulls, I saw nothing. So it's not getting good spark, if any at all. So we're gonna have to go and check the magneto. And to check the magneto, we're gonna have to remove this top engine cover. Slide that over there. Got three five sixteenths to remove the gas tank, or at least pivot, pivot the gas tank to the rear. So you have access, access to the engine cover, the metal engine cover where the recoil starter is attached to. Underneath that, you have access to the magneto or ignition uh, coil. or armature or magneto that is what they call it three eighths bolts for the front two of them Another 516s to hold the dipstick. Dipstick? Fetus, you know what you are. You're a dipstick. A 14 carat dipstick. Okay, now we got the dipstick removed from there. Everything's free and loose. Let's take a look and see what we can find here. Repo seems to work okay. Here's the magneto. Anything obviously wrong with it. The gap seems to be okay. Wire seems to look okay. Here, I'll show you something. Because this is a key start, this has an electric starter motor right here. This is a good opportunity to test this too. You know, this also has a stator too. Stator recharges the battery, which is very cool. Very cool. Believe it or not, I actually have a um, extra battery for this that actually holds a charge. So I think I might just take that battery and replace it, put it in there, and see if this uh, starter motor turns. When I was talking about before, the mechanism for the kill, right? So when you, uh, when you loosen the, you know, get to right there. I'm gonna take the clamp off, retract the brake, you see? Now it's shut off, see? Sometimes if that tab is, is bent wrong, when you push the bell handle down, it barely moves out of the way of this so that it's still touching. So while you think that you're actually, you know, disengaging the kill, right? It actually is still touching, you know? But this seems okay. 
now it's touching. You want to see if this little thing moves when this thing touches it. If this thing moves, it means it's touching, see? And it does move, see? So there's nothing wrong with this uh, brake situation here. Let's put that battery in. Remove the spark tester. Now I'm removing the um, spark plug just to see the condition of it. And it looks okay. See? However, it doesn't seem to be wet. It should be wet, no? Given the fact that I sprayed stuff in there, you know what I mean? Let me spray something in there. It seems to be gapped correctly. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna swap this out with another one, just to make sure. I've got this other spark plug. It's not exactly the same, but it's the same type and it's newer. Thank you. FedEx guy. All right, so we got a new spark plug in there. We shot some fluid in there just to make sure it has fluid. Uh, before I swap out this magneto, let's change the battery for the key start. So under here is the battery, okay? I have supposedly the same type of battery that I got off another key start. My buddy Jason of Pat Taste Performance gave it to me. Uh, he wasn't using it, so he just gave it to me. Anyway, I charged this up in a trickle for a while. Uh, the next day, I put a multimeter to it and it showed 12.67 or so, right? And then uh, a week later, I tested it again and it still showed 12.55. I just tested it again with a multimeter. It shows 12.54. So this is holding a charge. So I'm going to replace this right now. So it appears that it's just... 5 16 volt holding the tray. Let's remove this bagger to make it easier. And no wonder it's so heavy, it's full of crap. Look at that. It's full of, of wet grass. Gross. <laughs> wet grass from somebody else's crap. That's even more disgusting. A wood screw type thing comes off. <laughs> comes off, but it doesn't come off. What on earth is holding this on? So you can kind of pivot these handles upward so that you can see what you're doing over here. And then uh, loosen that bolt, yet it still doesn't want to come out. Slide it out. How about that, huh? to splice these get that on there somehow so I just uh, concocted tab system onto this battery that I had because I had to splice the other one whatever um, and then found one of these connectors to it 
problem is this battery is a little bit bigger than the stock one, see? It's a little wider, so it won't fit in the box to slide back in there. So for now, I'm just tucking it in here. It is connected. Let's, uh, let's turn the key and see if the motor turns. Are you ready? So uh, put the bell handle down to take it off of the safety. Let's turn the switch and see if this motor right here spins. Okay, the motor spins, but the gear doesn't. See what I'm saying? So it appears that this motor spins, right? But whatever gears the motor spinning to turn this gear isn't, is stripped. So I can feel it turning, right? And then when I turn the key, something's stripped in here. You know what? I think I have another motor. So I just went to my uh, shed. I have another motor. I'm just swap it out. Only because I'm curious to see if I can get it going. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. So it looks like it's just uh, couple of three eighths <clears throat> to remove it. There's one. There's two. Disconnect. Put the new one on. It's leaking some gas over here. At least we know we have gas. Look at this. I don't know what that's from. I bet you it's from the broken one. It's connected again. Can't get any leverage here. Let me connect this, okay? Okay, it's kind of on there. Alright, let's see if it turns. There we go. Works. It's just compression is really heavy right now. How about that? How about that, guys? It works.
Let me oil this up a little. Look at that. Awesome. So look, I found out what that stuff was. Look in the bottom of the motor. That's a shame. This motor is Dunsky now. Unless you can get a, another bottom part of this, it's not worth fixing, you know what I mean? Because the bottom part, how much would that cost, you know? This thing is only like, I don't know, $25, $30 or something. So it wouldn't be worth it to fix, but I'll probably keep it for parts though. So I'm using some toolbox, buddy. Just to lubricate this thing here. Next, we, were, we weren't getting spark, right? Or very bad spark. So let's change that uh, magneto out. I have a spare magneto. I've got lots of them actually. I just grabbed one out of the bin. Quarter inch bolts or screws. Remove the magneto from its posts. Take the kill wire off. Move the boot from the spark plug. Take the new one. Connect the magneto kill. Place it on top of the post. Make sure the holes line up and it does. It has a words here that says this side out. Or like they say in Canada, this side out. So I guess I'm not going on vacation to Canada this year, fellas. It'll be the first year in two year in three years that I haven't gone to Canada for vacation, Christmas vacation. You know why? Because they they close the borders. They don't want sickly Americans in there, in their country, infecting everybody with COVID. So I'm going to turn the uh, magnet to this area here so that the magneto sticks to it right you put a business card in here why 10 one thousandths air gap standard business card ought to do it give or take a little you know it's not the space shuttle not rocket science as long as you get it close enough that it's not touching, as close as you can get it without touching. That's it. Can't see, Henry. Well, I gotta get the business card out, don't I? There, there it is. It's tight, I'm connecting the boot back on here again. And uh, what do we do here? We change the starter motor, change the battery. Got the battery hooked up to it. Key switch does turn the motor and does turn the flywheel. We weren't getting much spark, if at all. We changed the magneto. It's connected onto the spark plug. Gonna now replace everything. Okay, let's see if it starts now. I'm just going to pull it first, okay? Hey, 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 we got something. We got more than before, for sure. Well, we didn't have that at all. So I have a feeling the carburetor is dirty because it won't stay running on its own. Pretty hard. 
hard to pull, to be honest with you. It's not really starting anymore either. Alright, there we go. Let's see if it starts from the electric start. So it does start, but I think the carburetor might be dirty. So guess what? Not only did we change the starter, change the battery, change the magneto, we're not gonna do a carburetor clean too. So you know what else could be affecting it? It's this throttle cable here. It's not connected, it's busted, right? So I think I'm gonna remove this throttle cable just so that this thing is not under um, pressure, you know what I'm saying? Under tension, because this thing is supposed to be um, freely moving like this. And if this thing is stuck under pressure, it might restrict that a little bit. So I'm just gonna remove this. So now this is you can move it by hand without having to do that. And this matters too, how smooth this is. Could have been, could have been just bind it up, you know what I mean? Maybe if I did that, it might start easier. Who knows? But let's remove this and see if we can uh, clean the um, carburetor. Okay, as you saw, I did a quick carburetor clean, and I'll tell you something. Uh, the plate over here was missing a screw, so the plate was sticking out about half an inch, meaning that there was not a good seal between the carburetor and the intake manifold. The intake manifold was a little uh, worn too, but the O-ring goes right over it, so it shouldn't be an issue. But uh, if there's an issue, that would be the issue. It's the intake manifold would need to be replaced. It wasn't all that dirty. It did have some rust residue on it. I just primed it like three times. It looks like it is priming. Let's give it a try. Let's try the electric start this time.
time it every time, huh? I hear a clanking sound. I hear a clanking sound. I don't know where the clanking sound is from, but how about that? I mean, how about it? Look at all the stuff we did to this today to get it going. The reason why it didn't start before, throttle cable was in an area where it didn't allow it to get just a proper amount of throttle, right? The plate was missing a screw so it was loose from the engine block therefore the carburetor was a millimeter or so apart from the engine block causing a leak air leak into the uh, where the intake manifold is after I put a screw in there the bolt the 3/8 bolt it closed the plate sealed the intake manifold the rubber o-ring on the carburetor sealed onto the intake manifold mouth so that gives it a good seal carburetor was dirty we replaced the starter motor on it because the old starter motor was Stop! the self propulsion works how about that huh i think i might have a cover for it i'm gonna go get it see if it'll fit i doubt it um replaced the battery for the key start and we got the key start electric start working it does have a clanking noise, and it still looks like hell. I'm gonna change the uh, air filter and put the cover back on. Put the screws back onto the uh, top engine cover cowling. Mailbag. I've got a letter here from Canada, eh? And it's from a subscriber that I know who also follows me on Instagram. It's uh, Franco Alia from Niagara Falls, Ontario. I don't get too much fan mail, but this is cool. Hey, Henry, thanks for the daily entertainment. Keep up the grind and fantastic videos. Enjoy the sticker, Franco. So Franco sent me one of his own stickers. Now cool? Franco the boss. Go follow him on Instagram. And uh, he also follows my buddy Jason over at Pate's Performance. And uh, he's got a sticker for him too. Jason and Mrs. Pate's Performance. Please give to them. I will. Next time I run out of the house, swing around and give Jason and the Mrs. the Franco the Boss sticker. Uh, I ordered this on eBay, I believe. I don't know what it is. It feels kind of funny. But I know I ordered on eBay. Oh fish food <laughs> nothing nothing uh, tremendously exciting but a sticker from Franco the boss that's pretty exciting Franco the boss you are going on mowers and blowers wall of fame put you right next to Griffin lawn service I believe they're in Mississippi it's that time of year I've got my son back from college. We got four people in the house, taking showers, laundry, whatever. My cesspool has been backed up for a couple of days now. Called my friend John to come over. And sure enough, even though they're backed up, they always come and pump out my crap. And they always give me the best prices too. Anyway, over here in Long Island, we have what's called cesspools. I grew up in New York City, so all I knew was sewer systems. But over here, they have cesspools. So if you use your laundry, you take long showers, it eventually fills up and you gotta get it pumped out. I always get a good deal from these guys, but lately, the dumping fees have made them have to charge me more. But I'm cool with it because we've had a long relationship. It always sucks when you have to mess with crap, you know what I mean? So I dug this out, it doesn't fit. It's 
for the other model. This part bumps up too much. So, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Looks like hell, you know what I mean? And I don't want to go through the trouble of <laughs> painting it, you know? It, uh, you know, it runs okay, but it doesn't run all that great, you know? It's all right. I'm surprised the self-propulsion works, you know? It has a clanky sound. I don't know what the clanky sound is. I checked the blades and all that stuff, but uh, well, we did a lot to this, man. Changed the battery, it started the motor, cleaned the carburetor, um, tightened the plate, throttle plate onto the engine uh, block so that the intake manifold mates well and seals well with the carburetor. And then it started and ran okay. Uh, there's no smoke coming out, surprisingly, but uh, this key start, big baggers, front self-propelled, Craftsman 6.5 Quantum lawnmower works. Uh, I just drained all the, not drained, but used up all the gas that was in here. It's good for storing for the winter. Anybody want it? Let me know. That was a lot of work for this thing today, but got it out of my hair, you know, and uh, did a lot of stuff to it. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's, it's satisfying to know that, you know, it didn't start before the episode today. Getting my last lawnmower going and now storing it for the winter. Thanks a lot for following me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.